don't quit your day job. Hi, my name is Evelyn. I quit my 9 to 5 job in tech to become a full time YouTuber. Since then, my channel blew up, I'm getting sponsorships, things seem to be going really well. But the truth is, some days I feel lonely and stuck, and every day I feel like I'm not enough. So, here are a few unglamorous days in my life after quitting my 9 to 5. Is this the dream life you envisioned? So, I wasn't going to vlog today, but I just took out the camera in the morning and I thought, why not? Let's catch up. I'm feeling like a hot chocolate today. I know I haven't posted a video for a while. This Hong Kong vlog was supposed to go out like a week and a half ago. It's been a bit hard to feel excited to do things. But recently I've been telling myself, hey, making videos is something that brings me a lot of joy. No matter how life might feel otherwise, it doesn't take away the enjoyment I get from editing. That makes sense, right? So I have been able to get back to editing, even if just a little bit every day, and this made me really happy. I know around this time of the year, a lot of us might get sad or feel down. And if you want to get out of that feeling, just think about what makes you happy and remind yourself, no matter how difficult it is otherwise, it doesn't take away the joy of doing what you love to do. So much cleaner. <laughs> is persimmon. I kept it in the freezer for a bit so it's nice and cold now. Mm. So I am learning how to bookkeep as a freelancer on Skillshare who is kindly sponsoring today's video because I'm a full-time YouTuber now. I need to know where my money is going in and out because my livelihood depends on it. I've been doing YouTube for four years now. Among other side hustles, I've always struggled to think of these creative pursuits as real businesses. In order to turn a hobby into a real business, you need to get on top of finances, be strategic about building an audience, managing your time. And I've been very transparent with you guys on this channel about how some of these things really stress me out. I wish I had more resources to lean on when I was trying to figure it all out on my own, but luckily you don't have to because Skillshare has everything you need to go from passion to paycheck or seed your side hustle. You can learn how to start your creative project and overcome that fear to take action on what you know you love by following the your creative business learning path. Or if you're like me and have a phobia of admin tasks, you can take 46 minutes to learn how to do accounting from the CEO of Skillshare. Matt Cooper. You can do all of that with one month free trial of Skillshare if you're one of the first 500 people to click the link in my descriptions. I honestly feel like a lot of us get stuck in 9 to 5s we don't want to be in because no one taught us in school how to turn our passion into a business. So thank you Skillshare for empowering all of us creatives here to carve out our own paths. Remember the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. I hope you take advantage of that. I don't know if this just happens as you enter late 20s and like you move around a lot. I feel like a lot of my meaningful friendships are online. I'm really, really grateful to get to call my friends from all over the world to have like really empowering conversations. I just wish I get to spend more time with my friends in person, but lately a lot of them have been stopping by Guangzhou. I feel very loved. I think I see the cafe. It's a cafe right there. And Alex. Oh, she just went in. <laughs> I'm Alex, I'm Evelyn's friend from Beijing and I'm here to see her and have some something to drink. I feel so awkward. <laughs> I'm taking a jazz class at the gym. <laughs> this is very out of character for me because my bodily coordination is negative. I ate some food earlier and I seriously regret it. 
Um, but YouTube is a very isolating job and the complete lack of human interaction drives me crazy, even as an introvert. I don't even talk to anyone in this class, but just a simple act of being in sync with other humans and challenging my body to move in different ways feels pretty good. I mean, I'm terrible at it, but I guess trying out different gym classes is my new hobby now. We're making nat huang bao. Lately, I feel like my life has been a bit unglamorous. <laughs> the days are getting short and a bit repetitive. Growth on YouTube has slowed and I find myself listening to podcasts like How I Built This and The Colin and Samir Show and feeling like oh, I wish I could be surrounded by these people but instead I feel lonely and stagnant in a neighborhood halfway across the world that's filled with shoe warehouses. Like, I'm not even kidding. This doesn't feel like the dream life I envisioned after quitting my 9 to 5. Something needs to change. I'm getting a haircut. I'm so self-conscious. I was in a charity at the restaurant, but it's actually really loud in there. So here we are. I've been reading this book recently called The Body Keeps the Score. It's taken me a long while to get through about half of it. It's about how our body remembers and processes trauma, even if our mind might be completely unaware. I haven't really thought of trauma outside of the context of really severe PTSD with war veterans, something that's surely far removed from my life, but I started therapy lately. Therapy has been a weird experience in a good way as a psychology major. I've been learning a lot about my attachment style and traits that I've always kind of half-heartedly known in my personality, like how I'm incapable of not being hard on myself or have trouble expressing what I want or saying no. But my therapist and this book have been helping me realize these are actually all ways my body is keeping score of my childhood. If you grew up in an Asian household or if you read The Joy Luck Club, like I haven't experienced anything worse than that, but I have only just realized that those childhood experiences are still impacting me to this day. Like it sounds so obvious, but it's a crazy idea to actually internalize. It's like a very clarifying and cathartic feeling to finally make sense of my life after almost 30 years. So I actually went in the hospital a couple of weeks ago to order an ADHD test because all my life I have struggled with attention and this problem has just become magnified since I started working for myself because I have no one or deadlines to structure my schedule. So I went in, sat down, and then the doctor asked me a set of questions about attention and then she looked up she was like are you feeling anxious and i was like huh and then she asked me about recent life events how i was sleeping my childhood and 20 minutes later she was like i think attention is the least of what you should worry about what's more important is your anxiety and the pressure you put on yourself i'm sure she meant it pretty matter of fact because I've only met her for 20 minutes and she's probably said the same thing to like hundreds of other patients every single week. But I cried because I went into the hospital <laughs> to fix myself, to make myself better, only to be told by a perfect stranger that my problem is never thinking that I'm good enough. So yeah, that's why I haven't posted much in the past couple of weeks. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. I feel like I'm not the only person in our little community who needed to hear that today.
I just came back from yoga class, second workout class of the week. I'm very proud of myself. I got this shelf thing for the kitchen island, which is actually just a foldable table. It's actually really messy down there. I feel like this vlog might come out a bit heavy. I don't know, I hope not. It's the end of the year, we all overthink and get reflective around this time. <laughs> the important thing though is remember what brings you joy and keep doing that. It's time to get excited about 2024, the year of Zishushou. The year of the dragon. Dragon, that's the it. The year of... <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking forward to in the new year? New things you want to learn? Maybe on Skillshare? Use my link to get one month free. I'm taking some time to plan my 2024. I want it to be a year driven by love, not fear. I know it sounds really cheesy, but anyways, life has not been smooth sailing lately. I thought I'd still share it with you because this is what you sign up for. We all know there are ups and downs if you buy the bullet and quit your 9 to 5. And this is what it looks like. Plus all the crying I didn't show on camera. Now before you show this video to all your friends and tell them don't quit your day job, I think it's worth every bit. It feels like pushing myself to the edge to finally get to what I really want. It's like peeling an onion. You feel like you figured it out, but wait, there's another layer. And you only get to the core by putting yourself in an extremely uncomfortable place. I'm so uncomfortable right now, but it feels good to know that I'm getting close. Now please go share this video with all your friends. And like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.